Tom Brady and the Oakland A's took big steps toward Las Vegas. The 2025 NFL Draft has a host city, and LeBron James is maybe thinking of retiring. It's Wednesday, May 24th. I'm senior writer Owen Poindexter, and this is Front Office Sports Today. Tom Brady is officially buying a stake in the Las Vegas Raiders pending league approval. I think the NFL is going to be okay welcoming the biggest star into the owners club. As we discussed here previously, he will have a passive role with the team for now to not conflict with his Fox broadcasting contract, but it's not like we haven't seen him change his mind before. Speaking of which, some people still think he's not done playing. And he's not the only one making moves toward Vegas. The Oakland A's have a tentative deal with key stakeholders on a funding deal for a Las Vegas stadium, according to the Nevada Independent. We don't know the details yet, but it seems they are taking less than the $395 million they initially wanted for a 30,000 capacity retractable roof stadium on nine acres of land gifted from valleys. The other people who don't know the details are the Nevada legislators that weren't part of those talks. Actual legislation has not been filed at the time of recording, but that is expected to happen before the end of the week, which would leave just next week to get this deal done before the legislative session ends. And Green Bay will host the 2025 NFL Draft. At just over 100,000 people, Green Bay is the smallest city with an NFL team. But over the last five years, the Packers worked with local government to build hotels, restaurants, and exhibition space around Lambeau Field to be able to host an event that could more than double the city's population while it's happening. And after the Lakers were swept by the Denver Nuggets, LeBron James said, quote, Personally, going forward with the game of basketball, I've got a lot to think about. We don't know exactly what that means, but it's the first time LeBron has indicated that retirement could be on the table. The assumption has always been that he would stick around long enough to play at least one season with his son, Bronny. He's currently 38 years old and under contract with the Lakers for the next two seasons for a total of $97 million. Needless to say, he's the biggest superstar of his generation. He's still the biggest draw in the league, and if he retired, it would leave a massive hole. Up next, I spoke to Ryan Shazier, who was a highly touted NFL lineman before a horrific injury ended his career. In many ways, however, that was just the beginning of his story. We'll have that conversation right after this. Here's what's trending now. You can defer payments of a full NetSuite implementation for six months. 33,000 companies have already upgraded to NetSuite, gaining visibility and control over their financials, inventory, HR, e-commerce, and more. Everything they need to reduce manual processes, boost efficiency, build forecasts, and increase productivity. Whether your business generates millions or hundreds of millions of dollars, take advantage of the special financing offer of no payments or interest for six months at netsuite.com slash frontoffice. That's netsuite.com slash front office. All right. I am very excited to be joined by Ryan Shazier, former NFL player, uh, podcast host, and co-creator of the Steel City Greats Cannabis line. Welcome, Ryan. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? Thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah. So glad to have you. Um, so you were uh, you're drafted in the first round in 2014 by the Steelers. Uh, you were a pro bowler in 2016, also named to the pro bowl team in 2017. And also in 2017, suffered a pretty severe spinal injury that ended your NFL career. Physically, how are you doing right now? Oh, I'm doing well. Uh, I actually just had a workout this morning with my father, so it was a, uh, it, it, it felt pretty good just to get back out there and and uh, to be back in the gym. But it, it has been a long journey. It has been a struggle, and it has took me a little while to get back to where I want to be. Mm-hmm. And is where you want to be, uh, like uh, at athlete levels of fitness, or um, or or is it, what's the bar for you right now? Um, honestly, I just want to be. Uh, I would say not at the at, uh, athlete level of fitness because that is just like an extreme level of fitness, but I do want to have uh, some tone to myself. I do want to have a nice uh, shaped body, you know, especially when I you know, go out to Vegas and, uh, and, you know, Miami and go to the beach with my family. And I just, I still want to look good. I still want to feel the part. I, I still try to eat pretty healthy. 
uh, because I understand how good it can make your body feel. But just I noticed when I was working out, I, I feel happier. I, I feel better. So it's something that I'm just trying to constantly do and, and be consistent with. And that's why I want to work out more than actually just try to, you know, play football again like I once want, once wanted to. And how long did it take for you to feel like you could you could work out and at least work toward that goal of, of feeling physically good? So I was actually feeling pretty good when it came to working out relatively close to after my injury. So I, I learned how to walk again. And then I got injured in December and the draft was in May. So I walked in a May draft. And so that took me about uh, five, five, six months to be able to walk again. But when it came to just working out, I was still doing workouts as I was trying to learn how to walk again and as I was trying to play football again. So I was still working out consistently, uh, probably about four or five days a week when I was going through my rehab. Now it's more around three or four days a week. But I do uh, try to stay consistent when, when it comes to working out. Yeah. And shifting gears a little bit. What's your relationship to football these days? I, I see you're still kind of, you know, um, keeping track of the league, involved in it to some degree. But ha- how does it feel to to watch football if you still do and just think about the sport? Uh, honestly, I, it, I, I have uh, good days and bad days because sometimes when I watch it, uh, I just, you know, not jealous, but also uh, just missing the game. So I have that that point. But then also... Uh, sometimes I'm just I, I just love watching that football is a game that I've been playing since I was a kid. So I really enjoy every single moment that I get to play it. Every single moment I get to watch it. So I do have some moments when you know you're a little sad because you're not out there no more. But uh, I can imagine even Tom Brady when he retires or Peyton Manning, they still have those moments like, man, I wish I could still throw the ball. You know. So I think I have those moments to this day still. And and uh, but. You know, Tom, as Tom grows, the the less and less I want to play and the more I like to uh, get involved when it comes to commentating, when it comes to just talking about a game on my podcast or with friends or even as a, you know, an analyst when it comes to calling games. So those are things that I definitely see myself constantly uh, trying to grow and learn more so I can just stay attached to the game. Yeah. And um, obviously, like last year, we had the DeMar Hamlin situation, which was, you know, shocking, but also kind of a unique moment uh but there's also sort of more common feeling um situations like Tua in Miami um where he had some some severe concussion issues do you feel like how how do you react just as a person uh, having you know been through what you've been through uh when those sorts of situations come up and become a big conversation in the media so the way I feel about those kind of conversations is, first of all, I think about the person that's going through it because most people, when they're watching the game, they almost take out the fact that some of these guys are actually people and they see us more like robots and just athletes and they forget how easily we can be hurt just as easily as, as they can be hurt. So first of all, I always go back into the athlete and see and hope and try to imagine what they're feeling and how they're trying to overcome what they're overcoming. But then secondly, when I I see those things. I also just think about the game of football and how physical it can be, how tough it can be, and how at any given moment you think you can you can score a touchdown on a play or make a big hit or make a big play that can be your last play or that can be a play that you know can derail your season. So that's one thing that I when I look at those things, I always think about like man. It's so crazy how well Tua was playing at the beginning of the season. He was in the MVP conversation, and then he get two big hits, and now people are saying, hey, he might need to retire. So it just to like really think about that type of thing. Like with DeMar Hamlin, he made a routine tackle, stood up, and then fell to the ground. And now people are like, hey, man, he might be crazy if he want to play football again. And it just shows you how much guys really love the game of football, but it also shows you that at any given moment to any given person that the game can be taken away from you. Do you think it's uh, do you think the sport's too dangerous? Like, should there be changes made to make it safer? Uh, they're, they're definitely making changes to make the sport safer. But at the end of the day, uh, when my mom and dad signed me up to play football when I was five years old, when they re-signed me up when I was 10 years old, when they re-signed me up when I was 15 years old, and then by the time I was 18 year, years old, I was making my own decisions. 
at every single moment, they understood how dangerous the sport was. They understood what all came with the sport. But it's also the fact of how much does your kid enjoy playing it? How much do they love playing it? How much uh, do you feel that this is a part of them? Like my family understood if you took football away from me, that was like taking a part of me away from me. So when I got hurt, it really it really struck me in a really tough place. But some people like my, my in-laws, uh, my wife's brother, her, her 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 parents would not let him play football at all the whole time because he had a friend that got injured from the sport. So it just depends on who you're talking to. Like if it's me, if my kids really want to play football, I'm going to teach them how to play and I'm going to teach them how to play safely. But I'm also going to let them know that, hey, there are moments in this game that the game can't be taken away from you and it, it can change your life. But I feel like it's more of on the person. If the person feel like, hey, the risk is worth the reward, then I, I think that the, the game's not that, not that bad. Uh, since you've retired, you have uh, helped develop a cannabis line, Steel City Greats. Um, has that been an important part of your, your pain management and just um, your ability to, you know, get, get through the day? Yeah, I'm, I'm happy that I, I was able to partner with Seal City Grace, and we we have a partnership. We uh, I'm, I'm co-owner of the the strands that we have, and it's under the Organic Remedies uh, uh, dispensaries and grow facility. But I, I just really I'm really happy that I was able to partner with them because as I was going through my rehab, one thing that I wanted to make sure I didn't do is you know get addicted to opioids or just or just be attached to really strong pain painkillers and and I just I, I was never really a big fan of medicine even when I was playing I wasn't a big fan of medicine so one thing that I did was I talked to a friend of mine who was a pharmacist he knew about the cannabis space he knew about the marijuana space and I was saying hey you know I'm trying to rehab. And I'm just trying to make sure that I don't have to deal with the pain and I'm trying to wiggle my way back. So uh, I decided to, you know, started to try uh, some cannabis, some marijuana in my rehab when it came to just pain management, came to depression, came to anxiety, came to trying to help me go to sleep. And I found that it can help me in different ways, you know, if I took different strands. And so when me and Eric, uh talk we thought hey what a, a great job it would be to be able to make a strand that helped you out but then that you can also help others out so even in the short time that we've had the cannabis strand people in pennsylvania have come up to me and said hey ryan you don't understand how much medically your strand has helped me and i just i'm really happy to know that uh, I'm able to help others when it comes to just their pain management, what any type of uh, mental illness or mental uh, health challenge they're going through, and just in, any pain uh, struggles that they're going through. But also, you know, it's, it, it's one thing that's kind of cool, too, is uh, with with it being in this space, it can be recreational or uh, medicinal, but it just in the Pennsylvania area, I know that I'm helping people uh, with the medical side of things. Yeah, and of course, the NFL, has it's still – not allowed in the NFL, but they've, they only test once a year now and they've, it's just a fine if you get caught. So it's not allowed, but you can, it sounds like you can do it if, if, uh, if <laughs> yeah, you want so, to. Yeah. So they definitely, they definitely wiggle the rule, rules a little bit better because it's like, imagine all these great players not being able to play the game because of something that's not even a, uh, a, something that, you know, is a really bad drug, you know, and, and marijuana can definitely help in so many different ways. I think it's just now people are learning more about it and they're understanding that it's more uh, open to society. But, you know, we, we missed out on a lot of great years of, of players because of marijuana. And, and I'm glad to see that the NFL has changed the rules. And even when I was going through my rehab and I told them, you know, hey, you know, I know I'm still getting drug tested. Hey, this is something I'm doing for pain management. Obviously, I'm not going to play within the next year or two. Uh, would you guys, you know, change things up? And, and and they did. So I was actually happy to see that they were able to do that, you know, and uh, you see that they was trying to make a difference. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, lastly, you also have a, a podcast, Don't Call to Come Back, on Comeback Stories. Uh, what's one of your favorites, just in terms of the, the stories you've gotten to tell through that? 
Oh man, we we so we have so many favorite stories that we 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 talk about and and it can go from uh, a guy like Austin Ani who you know who played multiple sports. It can go to uh, like one. This one really hurts my heart, but it can even go to we talked to Taylor Lewan when it came to uh, the team up north. Or and if anybody that doesn't know what the team up north means, that means you know the University of Michigan versus Ohio State. And the reason I'll say that was one of my favorite pods is because. Just how uh, growing up, we actually hated each other, me and Taylor, because he played for the University of Michigan and I played for Ohio State. But just us on the podcast together and joking around, it, it really it was a it was a it was a great time to be able to talk about how the struggles that the University of Michigan went through while Ohio State, you know, while I was there and while guys are there now, how they were able to. Uh, be the powerhouse for that. So we'll just kind of see if with them. Obviously, it, it sucks that we we lost to them recently, but with the loss, it also allow us to uh, talk about just the history of the game. Another one that I really enjoyed was uh, having Greeny from ESPN. We talked about just some of the greatest numbers or some of the greatest players and the numbers that they were in. So, and it's just crazy to see how many great players was in number 21, how many great players was in number 33, how many great players was in number 50 and number seven. And and people just don't understand uh, just the meaning behind some of the numbers in sports and and some of the great players that's that's within them. So uh, it's, it's, it's a great podcast. We talk about everything and, and anything and when it comes to any type of comeback story. So, and the one thing I also like – as well as we talk about uh, pop culture. So it, so like even Star Wars coming back around, you know, made a fourth be with you. We even talked about that, you know, so it was kind of, it's kind of cool. We just talk about a little bit of everything. All right, sounds like a lot of fun. Ryan Chazier, thanks so much for joining us on the show. No, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. That's it for today. Leave us a rating on the podcast app of your choice. And if you send me a screenshot at Owen Poindexter, I'll give you some social media love. Got plenty to give. Thanks for listening. We will see you tomorrow. Tomorrow.